welcome to another Mr. Metabyte video. And this video is a little bit different insofar as it's spring and the birds are tweeting and uh, other things are going on. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. So summer's on the way. And to celebrate that, we have an HF100 as provided by Sony. A uh, really great machine, but not without its problems, and they do have quite a lot of problems, so uh, we'll be going through those. Um, I have done a, well, a few videos now on um, the HF100, and I'm assuming this will be no different with various odd capacitor issues, power supply issues, and uh, I bought this off eBay a while back. And um, the fault with it is that it has a streaky picture. So by streaky picture, I immediately think of capacitors, uh, probably power supply capacitors, maybe, I don't know, but we'll see. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's take the top cover off first before we power it up. Always a good idea. Okay, so it looks really actually very tidy. Uh, very pleased with the general look of it. The drum doesn't look too bad, but we'll look at that. Um, in the fullness of time. So I suppose the next thing is, is to power it up. Okay, so let's try tape. So far so good. Wine seems good. And rewind is also Pretty good. That's, that's excellent. So, play. And there's a picture. It's looking... I mean, my immediate thought is it's heads, but uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe the heads are bad. Um, could be wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's dive in and um, see what we can find. So the first thing is to remove screws. So I've cleaned the heads um, and uh, I now have a picture, but as you can see, that's looking pretty ropey. Um, I'm pretty convinced that the heads are actually really badly worn. So, um, it's a real shame because it's a really lovely machine otherwise. And um, I mean, the upper drum does have wear. I mean, it does show signs that it's been a fairly well used machine. But, uh, yeah, sad that the heads appear to be bad. Now, what I will do to confirm this is I will use a head testing meter. Now, I know these things aren't 100% uh, accurate, but they do give a good indication. And um, although this is a VHS type meter, uh, I do know that if I put it onto B range, which you can see that's already on, and um, test the heads, if they are good, they will show good. If they're bad, they will show bad. Um, I've done it with another HF100 in this mode with bad heads and almost brand new, good, low hour heads and compared them. So I know what to expect at the end of the day. It is what it is. It will do whatever, regardless of uh, the format. Uh, you just need to know how to set it and how to read it. 
which I've, I've sort of learned. So um, that's the next thing. Strip this down, uh, the, the drum assembly enough to actually get to the connections and uh, do the test. So let's do that next. So let's get this upper drum off and uh, check the heads. So you have to be a bit careful with this connector, which is for the hi-fi stereo portion because the connectors have a habit of breaking and isn't the easiest thing to pull it out. do that as gently as I'd like. It is, also, or it is actually worth checking that these coils are also in good condition. I have seen where the coils themselves start to cause problems. Um, they sort of start coming away from their mount, so or their mounting um, sections. So these actually look really good, to be fair. So the heads themselves look good. So the next thing I need to unsolder where these arrows are, I need to unsolder those, undo these two Allen um, screws here, pull this off, then take off the um, wires to the heads and uh, put a test meter on them. So that is a two millimeter Allen key to undo those. And the head 
drum is a 2.5 mil Allen key. So that's what you need. Two mil for the um, top, uh, bottom of the transformer and 2.5 for the upper head drum assembly. So I just carefully do this. And it's really hard not to melt anything else. <laughs> so, so I was getting a bit close to that plastic connector for the heads. And <clears throat> this Allen key is actually a little bit on the worn side, so it's um, causing a few problems actually getting the. <laughs> Getting the the actual um, bolt off. Now that one is actually. Slightly stuck. So, taking this off, it, this does actually go um, only one way, or it needs to be mounted only one way. And the way that is, is with this white section here, matching this white section here, see the letter A there as well. So that goes that way. So white to white, you can see the um, <clears throat> difference here in the, the heads as well. Here are the reds, here are the whites. So white, A, white a so yeah that's that then we need to get these connections off uh, there is slight method of my madness in doing this i mean you could say i'm going to an awful lot of effort when potentially these heads are no good, but my idea is, is if these heads check good on the meter and consistent, what I'll do is um, actually take the head disc off and we'll soak them. We'll soak them in um, isopropyl, in isopropyl bath to try and get off um, any residue that is causing them not to work as they should. Um, but we'll see, we need to test them first and uh, just make sure they are good. So, So you can see it. So let's turn it on. No, let's not turn it on. Let's connect it up first. I seem to remember the hi fi heads are different to the video heads. So um, I can't remember. I don't seem to have noted it either, what they should read. But anyway, let's go. Uh, 
bad. Is that showing bad? So on B, they should show pretty good. Um, they should be about, I think about four for really good heads. I actually had a good head disc um, that I could try this with um, a while back and um, compared it with a bad head disc that I had. And uh, yeah, it was similar sort of results, to be honest, straight into the red with a bad one. And about four. Yeah, that one's not quite so bad. So these heads are bad. They're apparently testing bad. I mean, I don't know whether that's correct because these heads are slightly different. But um, yeah, okay. So these heads are well and truly worn, and um, yeah, not much we can do really other than replace them. Sadly, so uh, I suppose I better just put these back together, um, or put the machine back together, rather. Uh, sort of in a temporary state. Make sure I label it so I don't turn it on testing in a few months' time or whatever, and. Uh, so obviously I'm not going to solder those head wires back and uh, do more damage. Although I probably wouldn't, to be fair. The only damage I'd do would be to the, um, the head disc, which needs to come off anyway. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to try and sort some heads. And that could be very, very fun. Um, I'm going to put this on as well. Put the transformer on. So white to white, not that it matters because it's going to be coming off again. And screws. So just put them lightly on. Remember that polarization for that. Obviously, not going to do these up tight. But the mayhem that I find myself in, <laughs> I don't want stuff floating about and I don't want things loose either. Um, I have limited storage and yeah, the last thing I want is things getting lost or broken. So otherwise this is a, a great machine. I'm really very, very pleased with this. Um, so it will be resurrected. We will get there. Um, it's just finding heads. Uh, I don't want to buy a machine specifically to risk getting bad heads or whatever. It's, it's, it's a waste of, of a machine, to be honest. And I'm pretty confident I don't have heads for this. I do have um, I do have a HF150, which you'd think the heads would be identical in many ways, but they're not. They're completely different um, from what I understand. I've not, not actually visually uh, compared or compared part numbers, but uh, I did actually have a machine, an HF100, where somebody had tried to put a 150 head disc on and <laughs> tried to get it to work, and it was it wasn't a happy experience for them, I can tell. 
um, which was actually the machine that I got a new head disc for. Um, that was a few years ago now. Say a few, a couple. So again, not tightening. I'm going to tighten these right up because it's pointless. So there we go, back together just loosely, and um, time to saw some heads. And it might be quite a while before I finish this video. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's crack on. Really looking forward to this. <laughs> um, so Conig, uh, Conig bag as well, and I'm guessing that's a spacer. Let's open up the instructions. Another feeder gauge. Yes, so um, here's the instructions. They look very Sony esque. <laughs> Basically, uh, we've got the centering jig and all the rest of it, plus the feeler gauges uh, for the uh, upper ring assembly. Make sure they're correct. They probably will do. But. Uh, yeah, I've never had a problem before. I will keep those though. That's useful. Put those in the, uh, put those back in the, uh, the Sony case, alignment case. So yeah, just as I was saying, uh, these are the little posts uh, which you need to put on the AFM heads so white nearest the magnet red furthest from the magnet so let's open these up we'll see been opened at some point i mean these these heads are so rare i mean i've i've just not seen them um for sale so that, that bit of tape's actually not opened. Oh, there we go. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. The posts are here. Which I can't, for the life of me, seem to be able to get out. Yeah, tape is actually, it's gone sort of, it's lost its sticky, but it's also sort of glued itself on. So as soon as you pull the tape off, there's no stickiness there. It's gone brittle. It's amazing to think these are just so new. Wow. So, magnets. And according to the instructions, we we'll compare it actually. Because obviously we have a the original. So there's the uh, original ones, and uh, they really do like look like Sony original heads. But uh, yeah, that's really fascinating actually. Well, I think it's fascinating. So, um, the action pin white, and then you bend them over. Now, I think, I, yeah, I'm just wondering. So, white goes here. And 
and red goes here. And it's with the flats. Oh, that one's not very good. It's with the flat edge there facing towards the, the rim of the of the head disc. That one's gone in fine. Let's remove that one's got a little bit of um plastic that's sort of there we go. Just had to give it a bit of encouragement. A bit of plastic that was getting in the way. And then you bend these over. I thought they were going to be much tougher than that, but they're actually not at all. which is good, because you, <laughs> you wouldn't want them to be really stiff. They actually bend really easily and then um, just sit, sit nicely. So, uh, yeah, so that's that. So I suppose we're going to warm up the iron. And a bit of solder. And just move that over a bit more so it sits nicely. I don't want to put too much heat into this. Just enough just to get a nice Joint. Be a bit careful, don't get too much heat near the head. Stone cold. Lovely. Oh, actually, fingerprints there. <laughs> Not from me. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to leave those. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so they're on. Lovely. And what I'm going to do is... Put these two Allen screws back in just slightly, but enough to actually be holding it. And uh, yeah, let's mount these back in. Actually, what might be fun if I put these in the machine is just to compare. Now, just compare the AFM heads, the uh, the audio. Hi fi heads on the meter, and that also gives me an idea of so that, that also gives me an idea of what to look for in the future if I get these heads. So, uh, what I should be seeing on the meter because this is a VHS meter. So, three and a half on those. And yeah, just over one. So you can see three and a half is good. 
one is not so good. That's that's a fairly worn head. So uh, that's that's actually fairly good. Um, so I put the heads on. Thought I was recording, and I wasn't. So yeah, you missed that. But it's fairly. You know the drill. Um, had the screws in there just to lift it on onto the uh, lower drum assembly and white, 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 A. So, yeah, as simple as that. And let's find the other. It does tickle me that these have four other than two. I'm sure there's a good reason for that, but uh, not too sure what it is because two seem to <laughs> hold them tight enough. And uh, yes, yeah, so My eyesight was a bit better. <laughs> Yay. Just really refusing to uh, to go on there. What I'm going to do before I start is actually just clean off the solder on these two because it really does need the flux, it seems. Yeah, you can almost smell that the ends of the wires are just not that great. Um, you know, they, they're tarnished with something, um, but that's it, that's done. <laughs> Just tighten up the Allen screws is this and when it sit properly. Uh, she got this lined up fairly well. And they are soft enough to easily just move to where you need them to be if they're not quite right. The transformers look pretty good as well. Rotary transformers. That's it, tightened up. Super. Restored the upper drum uh, with the scotch bright method and then a bit of Brasso and then isopropyl and uh, take any stray residue off. And the uh, transformer also looks really good. So that's encouraging. So let's put that on. And I'm not missing anything, am I? It doesn't feel quite right. Ah, just wasn't putting it on right. <laughs> of course I wasn't. Uh, yes, so. Pop that in there. Now, 
I don't believe I'm going to have to do any adjustment on the upper because I've not on the upper uh, transformer assembly because I've not removed it. I've not replaced the drum, um, and I've I've never had a problem. Uh, I mean, you'd almost argue, why would I? Um, but uh, I'll just put those screws in before I tighten that right up. And tighten up the Allen screw. There we go. Let's check there. Clean. And I totally have messed that up. Yeah, somehow I managed to knock the spring out. <laughs> well, I managed to do that. <clears throat> I'm usually so careful, but uh, yeah, I just sort of, I don't know what I did. Just twisted a bit odd and it, it uh, unhooked from the one, well, the one side, so. Oh, really, I have shot this from a terrible angle, haven't I? All oh, you've seen is my fingers most of this video, or this part, anyway. But anyway, hopefully you get the idea. And I oh, should clean that a bit better. Oh, I'll have to wait. Am I? Okay, so. That's of interest. What are those feeler gauges? There we go. So I should be able to put this in here. Which should go between the two. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's it. I'm not going to push it in. <laughs> I don't want to risk damaging those transformers because they are old. But yeah, that is that is going in. So yeah, super. Okay. And uh, what was the other adjustment? They wanted you to check. Right, okay. So that mustn't enter the gap. And it, and it doesn't. <laughs> I've just tested it. I'm not playing with it anymore. It's just, yeah. <laughs> um, so I will just check. I have actually tightened that, which I have. And then put this in, which is slightly melted. So hopefully it will go in okay. Just very gently caught the iron on it. It actually went in really nicely. So that's a top tip that never happened. Okay, so it's all back together. Uh, so time to give it a test, I suppose. So Brit Awards tape. Love that sound. Let's see how we're going. So we have a good picture. This tape is fairly warm, but I am seeing quite a lot of noise and uh, we spotted you can see some darklies coming off the, the lighter areas or light to dark areas. Uh, let's check the tracking. It's for best soundtrack so yeah. And the problem I have that's actually linear audio. So 
so the um, hi-fi audio is not working either and uh, that's um, interesting so um, this video is getting quite long now so I'm going to leave it here and in the next one I'm actually going to look at the VU meters getting those working as they should and uh, also a little bit uh, into the hi-fi uh, audio issues and uh, yeah so that'll be part two and then part three probably will be um, going through and trying to find out what's going on with the uh, with the, the heads and the quality and uh, some possible alignment so with that thank you very much for watching I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks on this and uh, maybe just enjoyed seeing somebody changing the heads on an HF100. So with that, thank you very much for watching and see you in another video. Bye for now.